In this video, we're going to talk about circular motion. Circular motion is all around us. Wheels on vehicles, hard drives on computers, wind turbines producing electricity, the spin of our Earth. Basically, all heavenly bodies are going to exhibit circular motion. Circular motion can be uniform or non-uniform. Uniform circular motion is going to be an object traveling around a circular path that it keeps a constant speed, whereas non-uniform will always be changing its speed. Now we can describe circular motion in terms of position, velocity, or acceleration, just like we can with linear motion. So let's see how linear motion is different from circular motion. First of all, we usually call circular motion angular motion. And so we're going to have angular position, angular velocity, and angular acceleration. So let's start with position. We usually use the symbol D to indicate displacement or the change in position. Or a lot of times you'll see delta X, which means change in position in the X direction. So we could have delta Y uh, as well. Now with angular displacement or angular position, we'll use the symbol delta theta, where theta is going to represent an angle. If we're moving around a circle, um, you can see that this, this, uh, this dot here, this red dot, as it moves around the circle, it's gradually changing the angle as it moves. And so the angle is increasing as it's moving around the circle. And so that's why we use the angle when we're just describing circular motion. Now you may have seen something that looks like this. This is called the unit circle. And we use uh, degrees sometimes when we're talking about circles. And so a complete circle, if I moved all the way around uh, this unit circle, would be 360 degrees. But the SI units, or the standard units for theta, the angle, are called radians. And one complete rotation around uh, the circle is 2 pi radians. So 2 pi radians is going to be the same thing as... 360 degrees. Now you won't have to convert between degrees and radians very often in physics, but if you did need to, here are the conversions. So converting from degrees to radians, uh, we would multiply the angle in degrees by pi over 180. Going the other way, we take the angle in radians and multiply by 180 over pi. Okay, so that's displacement. Let's go back and look at velocity. Now we use the symbol V when we're talking about linear velocity, and we use the equation delta x over time. So it's how long it takes you to change your position. That's what velocity is. When we're talking about angular velocity, uh, we can calculate it using delta theta over time. So it looks very similar. Instead of V, we use the symbol omega. We use a lowercase omega. And then acceleration. With linear acceleration, we use the symbol A, and that's going to be equal to the change in velocity over time. So how long it took you to change your velocity. For angular acceleration, we use the symbol delta omega over time. Same thing as linear. We just change the symbol. And then we use the symbol alpha to indicate angular acceleration. So basically, these over here are the angular equivalents of our linear equations. So what if you knew the angular position, you wanted to convert to linear position, or you knew angular velocity, you wanted to convert over to the linear version of that. Well, you may even be asking, why would you ever want to do that in the first place? Well, if you knew how quickly a bicycle wheel was spinning, you know, its angular velocity, how quickly it was spinning here, you could determine how quickly the bicycle is traveling down the road, which is a linear velocity. You can convert from one to the other. Now when we're converting between the two like that, we call the linear equivalent of angular motion tangential motion. The word tangent refers to a line that's uh, drawn that's just touching uh, the edge of the circle. And so the angular motion would be traveling around the circle and then tangential motion it's kind of like as if you were to let go, if you had an object that was spinning around on a string and let go of that string right at this point as it's spinning around, it would take off in a straight line and it would move along that tangent line. So that's what the tangential motion is. So when we're converting from angular motion to tangential motion, all we have to do is multiply the angular uh, quantity by the radius of the circle. 
by multiplying by the radius, we're going to be accounting for the whole distance of the circle. So if we're looking at this circle again, uh, we're measuring theta, just the angle, as we have an object moving around. But when we add in here the radius, if we were to uh, multiply the distance by the radius, we're going to account for the entire distance, which we call the circumference, as we move around the circle. Now circumference, if we wanted to calculate that, uh, this would be equal to 2 times pi times the radius. 2 pi is actually one complete rotation in radian, so that's where that comes from. Okay, so let's summarize these conversions here. When you want to convert from, uh, with position here, if you want to know delta x, it's going to be equal to delta theta times the radius. And then for velocity, velocity is going to be equal to our angular component, which is omega, that means angular velocity, times the radius. And then tangential acceleration will be equal to alpha, which is angular acceleration, times the radius. And so that's how you convert from one to the other. So let's try converting here with a, with a problem. So this vehicle, uh, if we knew how quickly the tire was spinning, or in other words, its angular velocity, and let's just say that it was spinning with an angular velocity of 35 pi radians, and let's say we also knew the radius of this circle uh, to be 25 centimeters we could determine exactly how fast the car is moving down the road. In other words, we can calculate its tangential velocity. So to do that, we're going to learn, use the equation we just learned. So velocity, this is the tangential or linear version, is going to be equal to the uh, angular velocity times the radius. We do have to use SI units here for the radius, so we're going to have to convert 25 centimeters to meters, so it would be 2.25 uh, meters. So let's go ahead and plug in those numbers. We get a velocity of 27.5 meters per second and that's roughly about 100 kilometers per hour which is basically highway speed. In other words 60 miles per hour. And that is circular motion.